professional education on this. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. Let me introduce myself. My name is Andrea Weiss and I am uh, trained as a career counselor. I have a private practice in Davis and I also do work with UC Davis staff and do training and Myers-Briggs workshops and I do some recruitment in the nonprofit sector. So a variety of things, but one of the things that I do enjoy most is helping folks as they work towards uh, their career development and career advancement. So as I said, I, I really appreciate UC Davis continuing on professional education, sponsoring this series to future proof your career. UC Davis uh, continuing in professional education is the workforce development aspect of UC Davis. And as many of you may know, many of you may be alumni, they offer a wide range of, of courses and certificates, uh, many of which are typically online, but today in particular, at this moment in time, many of them are, are moving to virtual so that you can still continue to advance your, your career through, through their offerings. So today we're going to talk about LinkedIn and using LinkedIn specifically for job search. Now, uh, there, there are a lot of different things that you can do with LinkedIn. Today we're going to focus specifically on job search. And I hope that many of you already have a profile. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile yet, then certainly I would encourage you to, to get on to uh, making an account. It is uh, sort of a, a necessity in, for professionals these days. And these are some of the reasons that you might use LinkedIn. To begin with, there are over 610 million members on LinkedIn and it's growing. So you can kind of think about it as an expanded contact list. Uh, it's a giant database that you can utilize and search with all the different filters to help you with your job search, to help you as resources for your, your work that you're doing. So there's lots of, lots of uses for, for LinkedIn. Actually, 92% of recruiters say that they're using LinkedIn either to source candidates or to research candidates once someone has applied to the position. Uh, employers definitely will be reviewing your LinkedIn profile. Uh, it's, it's very common that once you apply for a position that they're going to be looking you up on LinkedIn and hopefully finding something that is a, is a fully built out profile. Um, and, and really, you, you should be putting your LinkedIn uh, URL on your resume so that you make it easy for them to find you. And actually research has shown that resumes with a LinkedIn URL on them have a 72% chance of hearing back if someone goes to your profile and it's a good comprehensive profile. So it's really a great spot for branding yourself personally and you can go a little bit beyond what your resume says. And in, in general, LinkedIn, it's, it's more of a chance for you to show your personality a little bit, to speak in the first person. So these are some of the reasons why you might use LinkedIn in your job search. And of course, many of you have probably heard that 80% of all jobs are found through networking. And particularly at this moment in time when we're not networking in person, um, maybe we will be sometime in the not too distant future. But for now, LinkedIn is a, is a great spot for networking virtually. So I do have a little poll that I'm going to launch here. And this gives you also a chance to practice polling on uh, using uh, Zoom. So I just want you to indicate here, how strong do you think your profile is? And I'm a big fan of the Olympics and quite distraught that we won't be having the Olympics this summer. So I used a little Olympic analogy here. So are you golden, the champion of all profiles? Are you silver, up and coming, but could use more strength and conditioning in your profile? Or are you bronze? My, your profile brings new meaning to third place. <laughs> all right. So it looks like we've got a, some folks who got those champion profiles, so that's excellent. Maybe you're just looking today to get some tips on how to better use LinkedIn for the job search. Uh, the majority of folks are in that silver category, up and coming, but know that there's some things that you can do to improve your profile. 
And then we've got a few of those people that know that, uh, <laughs> that there's some work to be done. So, so great, that just helps give me a little bit of an idea of, of who's on our call with us, on our webinar with us today. So, so hopefully by the end you, of the webinar, you will have some ideas about how you can move up that ladder and uh, move from bronze to silver or silver to golden. And even if you're golden, how you can maybe become and uh, improve on your personal best, if you will. Wonderful. So as we think about LinkedIn, when you're, when you're in a job search mode or you think you might be in a job search mode, really the purpose of LinkedIn is to connect and be known. So I'm sure many of us, when we look at our Facebook uh, settings, we're pretty private. We only want our friends to see what we're posting and our pictures and our information. But when you're using LinkedIn, the whole idea is for people to find you. So I really want you to encourage you to go through the settings and privacy section. And you can see that it will walk you through how others see your profile, how others see your LinkedIn activity, how LinkedIn uses your data job seeking preferences, which is uh, what we're going to focus on today, how to use it for job search, and then some blocking and hiding because you can block and hide people that you don't, um, you know, that you want to keep out. But I, I really encourage you to go through all of those settings so that you have it set what is comfortable for you. But again, with that hat on that the purpose here is for people to find you. But particularly, you want to go through those job seeking preferences. So you can see, you can set things for um, job applications, what information it, LinkedIn is going to say when you submit a job application. You can let recruiters know that you're open to opportunities. That makes it easier for recruiters to find you. You can signal your interests to recruiters at specific companies that you've created a job alert for so that they are getting direct information that you're interested. Um, you can also share your profile when you click apply, and we're going to talk a little bit about that clicking just to apply and uh, I don't always recommend that you just click apply. Um, you can even set commute preferences. Of course, that doesn't really matter right at the moment, but you know, you can say how, how far are you willing to commute to a job. So these are all different things that you can set in those job seeking preferences. And again, I would really encourage you to go through all those settings um, as you're as you're beginning to you know, improve your, improve your profile. Oops. <laughs> Move to the next one. So let's talk a little bit about building your profile. I'm not going to talk about this too much because hopefully some of you already have a profile, but remember, start with the basics, build your content over time and use LinkedIn help LinkedIn's help section. They have a fantastic help section. It's, it's really clear. It easily walks you through what you need to do. So if there's something that you're wondering about, if there's something that you uh, think that you should be able to do in LinkedIn uh, and you're not sure how to do it, go directly to their help section. As I said, it's really, really uh, uh, user friendly. <laughs> So these are some things that uh, recruiters typically want to see in your profile. And we're gonna walk through these different things uh, in, in, the, in the rest of the webinar. So they wanna see a strong heading, and that's the information that comes right under your name on your profile. They want a good about section. Now uh, this used to be called the summary in LinkedIn, but more recently they've switched it to be about. And this section, you want it to be personable and you want it to be memorable. They're also looking for skills that match whatever job they're trying to recruit for. And you can utilize uh, job descriptions to find out what might those key skills be that you're gonna wanna have in your profile. They wanna see engagement in your field. Are you uh, in groups and uh, participating in professional associations that might relate to your field? They wanna see that you have a strong network. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go from zero to 60 overnight. You, you know, if you only have 30 connections, don't panic that tomorrow you better have 500 plus. You know, again, you wanna build that over time. 
but it is something, and we'll talk a little bit about how you can build your connections a little bit later in the webinar. Um, and you want it to be up to date. You know, if you're if you haven't look, visited your LinkedIn profile in a number of years, you don't have your current job on there, your honors and awards, or your skills are out of date, then you want to go in there and make sure that it's up to date. And you want to make sure that your profile is mirrors what's on your resume. You don't want someone to read your resume and then go to your LinkedIn profile and wonder if they are looking at two different people because they don't really match up. Um, and, you know, I do want to draw your attention to that note at the end that all of the information that's in your LinkedIn profile should be focused towards where you're headed, where you want to go. Same thing with your resume. You know, it's not, it's really a marketing tool, your, your LinkedIn profile. So it's not, um, you know, in real estate, if you were selling your home or you were having company over to your apartment, you would clean things up a little bit. <laughs> you would shove some of that stuff in a drawer or, uh, you know, the things that you didn't want everyone to see. Same thing on your LinkedIn profile. It doesn't have to be a storage, uh, a storage unit where you put the things that, you know, everything that you've ever done or accumulated. It, you really want it to be focused on where you're headed and you want it to be putting forward the brand or the image or the pieces of you that you would want a potential employer to see. So one of the most important things about your LinkedIn profile is your photo. And when you're in a job search, you definitely want to have a good professional photo. You want it to be a head and shoulders shot. You want to be facing forward towards the camera. You want to be smiling, ideally. Uh, you want to be dressed professionally. Now, when I say dress professionally, if you're uh, a nurse or you you do field work for the Department of Fish and Game, then you might dress in something that you would wear for work. So, if you do, you know, if you do field work for Fish and Game, maybe you would be dressed in something that you would wear going out into the field. But something that relates to your field of interest. And you want the picture to be career relevant. So you can see here, I have three photos, A, B, and C. And I'm gonna launch a little poll here, or actually have, uh, have Joe, my producer, uh, launch a, a poll of which photo do you think would be most appropriate for your LinkedIn profile? All right, so most people said B, which uh, is correct. Uh, B would be the, the best photo. A, a few people picked A, and that photo could be okay, uh, depending on what, what your, back, your, uh, your work is. But it's, uh, it's a little distracting in the background. It's a little bit too close up. You can see the person is wearing headphones. And so it's a little less professional than B is. And I'm glad nobody chose C. Uh, you know, that's not really the, the professional photo that you want on LinkedIn. Now, when I say professional photo, this doesn't mean that you have to go out and hire a professional photographer. Uh, most of us have a, a phone or have a friend who has a phone who can take a nice photo of you. You know, you might uh, make sure that the lighting is good and you know, take a number of shots and show them around and see what people think. But um, you don't have to go out and pay for a professional, professional photo. But that's the, fir you know, that's the first impression people are gonna get when they look at your profile. And so you want that to make, be making the impression that you want employers to have of you. All right, so then the next piece is that head that heading and as i said this is what this is the the words that come right under your your name on your linkedin profile now what linkedin will do is it automatically defaults to whatever your most recent position is that's listed on your linkedin profile but that is not what you want to have listed there you really want your heading to be almost like a tag a tagline what do you want to be known for 
what do you want employers who may be looking for someone in your field to uh, to see you as it does carry that heading section carries a lot of weight in the search algorithm for LinkedIn. So that's why you want to make sure that it has some keywords in it that it demonstrates your value and you can have up to 120 characters there. So you can see I put a few examples there of what something what your header might look like. PMP certified manager known for successfully leading multi million dollar technology projects or resourceful caring student advisor helping first generation students reach their academic and career goals. Or meticulous safety focused lab technician advancing research in level four bio labs. So create that strong headline take a few, uh, you know, take some time to actually uh, put something there that communicates what you want to be known for as opposed to just your current position. Secondly, that about section is also kind of after your heading is the next most important aspect of your LinkedIn profile when you're in a job search. This is really your chance to tell your story. And it's similar to what a summary of qualifications might be on your resume. It's, you know, you can kind of think of it about it a little bit like your elevator speech that you might give at a networking event. Uh, but it, it highlights your mission, your motivation, uh, a little bit about your experience and skills. But in your LinkedIn profile, it's written in the first person. It's written more in a conversational voice. So it's okay to use words like I and my. You want to think about it in, that it would take someone about 30 seconds or less to read. So you don't want to have a long, long, long about section. You actually are limited to only 2000 characters, but the first 300 characters are what someone is going to see when they're looking at your profile. And then to see the rest of your about section, they have to click on the see more button. So you really want to think about pulling someone in with those first 300 characters. You want to think about it kind of like a movie trailer, right? You, you see the movie trailer and you think, Ooh, I want to, I want to see that movie. So you want those first 300 characters on your about section to really pull someone into what you're about and have them say, hey, I should keep reading more. I want to click on the see more. I want to scroll down and see what this person's experience has been. So make sure that you have a good, strong about section. And then, of course, there's your work experience. As I mentioned, you want this to be consistent with your resume. Ideally, you can include a company logo when you're typing in your organization that you work for and your experience. Uh, uh, similar organizations will pop up and hopefully your organization will pop up and you can select to have the company logo uh, displayed there with your work experience. You want to provide a little bit of detail. You don't want to provide necessarily as much detail that you might have on your resume, maybe a couple sentences or a couple of bullet points that again, say what you do and what your impact has been. You might think about using an accomplishment story or two, but very briefly. And then another really important section, particularly when you're using LinkedIn for job search, is that skills section. You can list up to 30 skills. Your most endorsed skills will rise to the top, but you can reorder those. So if a lot of people have re endorsed you for Microsoft Word, you might say, well, gosh, I don't really want that to be what I'm most known for. I really want project management to be what I'm most known for. So in that skills section, you can reorder things. And again, in terms of how do you reorder, use the LinkedIn help section. It will guide you through it step by step very easily. And remember, in that skills section, it's not that storage unit. <laughs> it's not throw everything in there that you've ever done. You really want to focus on the skills that you want to use going forward. Other sections that you might include, and we're not going to go through each of these, but keep these in mind. And this is something that you can do over time. Again, the sections that I just mentioned, um, in addition to education, are ones that you should definitely have on your on your profile, but over time, you might add sections and include some of this information. Licenses and certifications, 
volunteer experience that you've done, perhaps publications, articles that you've written or, or things of that nature. Patents, if you happen to have a patent, if you get that in there. Courses that you've taken, and of course, if you've, some of you have taken courses through uh, UC Davis Continuing and Professional Education, those are fantastic to list on there because they're highly regarded. And so having those listed, again, boosts the fact that you're a continuous learner and that you have that additional knowledge. You can add a section on projects, so you could get a little bit more in depth on some of the projects that you've done. Again, you don't need to list every project that you've done, but think about where are you heading with your job search? What projects might potential employers be most interested in learning a little bit more about and write something about those in a project section? You might have some honors and awards. You can add that section. Uh, test scores, probably not a section that you're gonna list. You know, uh, people may not be interested in your SAT and ACT scores at this point in time, but um, you know, if, you're, if there are high school students on there, you might list on the, on the call, you might, you might list your test scores, although uh, even the SAT and ACT seem to be having less impact now. Languages are great to list. Um, as those can often be uh, sort of um, assets to you getting a position. You can list organizations that you're involved in. And then there is the recommendations section, which are, are great to have, but not a, not a necessity, you know, something to add as you go along. Now, one of the things I wanna spend a little bit of time on here is, is connections. And as you're connecting with people on LinkedIn, you want to connect strategically. Again, it's not so much about how many people you're connected with, and it's not about, as I said, going from 30 connections today to making sure that you have 500 tomorrow, because you want your connections, you want your LinkedIn network to actually be beneficial to you. You want it to be people that uh, you are in your field, people that you have a relationship with or that you want to build a relationship. So as you're thinking about connecting for your job search, you want to think about connecting with people with your target job title. You might look at connecting with employees at companies that you'd like to target or employees who used to work at that company and also connecting with people who are in your preferred geographic area. So these are some of the more strategic ways that you can think about connecting so that you broaden your network as you do your job search to people who may be able to connect you with potential jobs, people who may be posting information about the organizations that you're interested in working for so that you can be continually learning about what they're up to. Oftentimes those people will post when the organization is looking to hire. You can be gathering information should you have an interview about what the company's products or services are or what are some of their challenges. So think about connecting strategically. And remember, as you connect, you always want to personalize that contact, contact request message. Does anybody have any other ideas about who to connect with strategically in a job search? You can feel free to, uh, I think that uh, Joe will launch the chat box and feel free to type in there any other ideas of the types of people that you might connect with strategically as you're um, you know, in a job search mode. we'll come back and look at that chat box as, um, oh good, some folks are putting some ideas there. Maybe former colleagues who might add recommendations or endorse your skills, that is a great idea, people that you've worked with. Um, people with the targeted skill set that you're looking to improve, that's a great idea. Professors, absolutely, lots of times they have connections. Mentors, people who will write a recommendation for you, absolutely. Yeah, all great ideas of those that you might connect with. Terrific. So this is a little uh, formula, if you will, that you might use when you're reaching out to connect with someone. 
So you want to say hi and ideally use their first name and then mention whether you have or have not met them. You know, so it might, you might say, we haven't had the opportunity to meet. However, the work that you're doing in this field or at this company is of particular interest with me, or I noticed in your LinkedIn profile that we share, you know, we both used to work at this company or we share this person in common or some interest in common, some context for why you're reaching out to them. Um, maybe it is something from their LinkedIn profile or something that you read an article about them outside of LinkedIn and you look them up on LinkedIn. Um, and why you want to connect. And the best thing you can do is make it about them, right? We all like to have a little bit of flattery. <laughs> so, you know, you don't want to say, I wanted to connect with you because I'm looking for work. You might say, I wanted to connect with you because um, you seem to be a leader in your field and I really enjoy the posts that you've had. And so I wanna make sure to connect with you. Once someone does connect with you, then you don't wanna just leave it there that's your opportunity to reply to them to thank them for accepting your connection request and to continue the conversation so you might uh you know ask them a question in the in the in the um message at aspect of linkedin and keep that conversation going not that you have to be reaching out to them every day but maybe in a couple of weeks you see an article that you think they might be interested in or you get a notification on LinkedIn that they've posted something or that they've had a work anniversary or something like that, then you wanna keep that, that conversation going. Now, I do wanna to mention to you about the, um, the jobs tab. So I have a little screenshot up here of what that sort of top of LinkedIn looks like. So you'll have your home section, which is where all your feed is. You'll have your network. That's where you're gonna see all the people that you're connected to. And it's gonna give you suggestions on who else you might connect to. Uh, there's the jobs tab, which I'll come back to in a minute. There's the messaging. That's where your messages are gonna come in. And then you're gonna have the notifications where it's gonna tell you what's happening in your network. And then of course you have this me section, which is where you do your updates and you can set your privacy and settings and all that. But I wanna talk specifically about the job section here because we're talking about using LinkedIn for the job search. So when you go into the jobs tab, a couple things to pay attention to. One, it will suggest jobs that you might be interested in based on your profile. Um, mine's always crazy. It's suggesting all sorts of jobs for me because I'm helping my clients find different things. And so this LinkedIn must think that I'm uh, really unfocused about my career. <laughs> um, so you can, but it will suggest jobs. It will search job. You can search for jobs there. You can save jobs so that you can track opportunities so that you can keep yourself organized, which of course is always important in a job search. You don't want to get a call for an interview and you can't even remember what job it was that you applied for at that company. Uh, so it does that tracking for you. You can set up job alerts and you can set up you know, different filters on what types of jobs you might want to be alerted about. You can do salary research within that jobs tab. And they even have a section there for you to do interview prep. So really, I would encourage you to fully explore everything that's in that jobs tab. And there's a lot of, of really wonderful information in there. Use the filters. Uh, even when you're using the free version of LinkedIn, there's still a fair number of filters that you can use. If you're going to jump, you know, hot and heavy into a job search, then you might think about paying for a premium account for a few months while you're in that, uh, you know, full on job search mode. But otherwise, there are many, many things you can do in the free version that, um, that you can utilize for job search. As I mentioned to you earlier about the, um, you know, apply by sending your LinkedIn profile when you are applying for a job, I would really discourage you from doing that. Uh, on the recruiter end of things, uh, you know, you're just seeing someone's sort of their general profile. You, you as the applicant don't have the opportunity to write that customized cover letter to send that customized resume. 
So if you see a job on LinkedIn, I would encourage you to go directly to that company's website and see if they have the job listed on their website. If they have the job listed on their website, I would encourage you to consider applying directly through the website as opposed to through LinkedIn. Oftentimes organizations will look at applications that come directly through their website before they'll look for at applications that come through other more general sources because they're they're assuming that that applicant has specifically sought out their organization as opposed to just being on a general website like LinkedIn or Indeed and you know searching for budget analyst jobs and applying to everyone that they see open. So go to the company's website, see if you can find the job there. If you can apply that way. If not, of course, a lot of companies also, the only way you can apply is through LinkedIn or Indeed. So if that's, if that's what they've got, the way they've got it set up, then of course you'll do that. But be sure that you very clearly read the full job announcement, particularly down at the end where oftentimes it has instructions on what specifically they want you to do to apply. I've seen so many times where people will just send their LinkedIn profile and maybe they'll send a resume and they don't pay attention to the fact that the job announcement asked, you know, required a cover letter or required a writing sample or some other thing that they asked you to do or asked you to directly submit applications, not through LinkedIn, but to another site or through a website. And that's the quickest way to screen yourself out of out of a job is by not following the application directions. So make sure even if you're finding it on LinkedIn that you're reading the, the full instructions on how to go about applying. Now, when you're in the job search, of course, the jobs tab and all the information that there is there is going to be a really key way that you're going to be spending your time. But at the same time, definitely go beyond that jobs tab. You want to join groups. So groups can be wonderful in terms of finding out what's happening within an industry, keeping up on trends. Lots of times in a group that is related to your industry, people will be posting, hey, does anybody have a recommendation for this type of position I need to fill? And so you can oftentimes find out about things that aren't going to be posted on a job board. Uh, the other nice thing about joining groups is if you're in a, the same group with someone, even though you might not be first, second, or third connected to them, if you are in the same group, you can still message them. So that's a real benefit of being in groups. You also want to follow companies, follow companies that you're particularly interested in working for or companies that you know are leaders in your field. Uh, again, that gives you the opportunity to know what's happening in your field, to stay up on trends, and when someone visits your profile, they see that you're engaged in that particular field. You can, one of the other things you can do is provide referrals to recruiters. So maybe you're following recruiters from a particular company that you're interested in. Let's say you're following the recruiter at, um, at Genentech because you're interested in a project management position at Genentech but you see a recruiter on their post that they're hiring for a human resources position, which isn't something that you're qualified for, but hey, you know that person that you used to work with or you know, your, your brother's sister-in-law is in that field and you think she would be a good match. So build that relationship with the recruiter by making a referral to them. Believe me, they'll remember if you refer a good candidate to them. And then later when you, they have a position that that you're interested in, they're gonna maybe take a, another few seconds to take a look at your resume or your application. Another thing that you can do is take a skills assessment and you can take that and then you can decide whether or not you want to post your results of that assessment. So if you don't do so well or you fail the assessment, it's not gonna be a big mark on your, on your profile. You decide if you want that up there. And if you take a skills assessment and you don't pass it, one of the nice things LinkedIn will do is it will suggest some, some courses that you might take, uh, either through LinkedIn or things even that maybe uh, UC Davis Continuing and Professional Education might offer. And you can build your skills. And then three months later, you can take the skills assessment again on LinkedIn, and hopefully then you would pass it. 
You can also request introductions. That's one of the things that you can do on LinkedIn. So if you are looking on LinkedIn and you see that someone that you are interested in connecting with is connected to someone that you're already connected with, you know, you have that mutual, uh, mutual connection um, or mutual friend would be the, uh, the sort of the, the Facebook equivalent of it, then you can request that that person that you're already connected to make that introduction for you. Another great thing to do on LinkedIn is to ask for informational interviews. And that might be people that you're already connected to who you don't know as well, who you think might be able to provide you with information or be a resource to you as you do your job search or provide you with um, some direction or suggestions. Uh, or it might be someone that's not currently in your network, but you, you uh, have respected from afar. And so you can request to connect with them and see if they might spend a little bit of time sharing some ideas with you about their work or about the job search, those kinds of things. And people are at this moment in time, you know, we're social beings, so we're hungry to connect. So now's a good time to do some of that informational interviewing. So those are some of the things, ways that you can use LinkedIn, even beyond that jobs tab to help you in your job search. One of the other great things you can use it for in your job search is to prepare for interviews. And I want to call this out specifically because, you know, and we're going to, we're going to do a webinar on, on virtual interviewing here in, in the next week or so, but preparing for interviews, many people, it's a high anxiety <laughs> doing interviews. And one of the best things that you can do to help relieve some of that anxiety is to actually be prepared and not leave everything up to chance. So LinkedIn, as you're preparing for interviews, can be a wonderful resource. You can research and follow comp the company that you'll be interviewing with. You know, look at some of the employee profiles. What are they talking about? What are they working on? And you can also identify if you have any connections at that company. And those might be people that you reach out to, or if somebody that you know knows somebody at that company, you might ask for an introduction, or you might uh, definitely look at their profile and see what they're all about. So use LinkedIn whenever you're preparing for an interview. Now, once you've once you're on LinkedIn and you've got a you've got a golden medal, a gold medal profile, and you're doing all these things to uh, you've got your job alerts set and you're applying to jobs, then you want to make sure that you're maintaining your profile and that you're staying engaged. So by maintaining your profile, what I mean is that you're, you're making sure that it's up to date. You're, as you learn and research about the direction you're trying to take your career, are there some key skills that you have that you know you should go back and add in? Are there some accomplishments that you are realizing may be important? Do you go back and beef up your profile a little bit by adding some of those extra sections that we talked about? So make sure that you're, you're keeping it up to date. And then, you know, a lot of people feel like, gosh, you know, I hate social media. I don't like to be on Facebook. It all feels overwhelming. And, you know, I don't, you know, we all have those people who we wonder what they're doing during the day because they're posting five, six, seven times a day and, you know, about all sorts of things that seem completely irrelevant. And that happens on Facebook. It happens on LinkedIn too. Um, you know, so, but it's not something that you have to feel too overwhelmed with. You know, if you're interacting on there a couple times a week, you're commenting or you're congratulating or you're responding or you're sharing something, maybe every now and then you're actually posting something yourself, then that's enough. You don't have to feel like you have to be on there all the time. At the same point, you don't want someone to have messaged you or put in a connection request and it's been sitting there for two or three weeks and you haven't responded. That doesn't send out a good impression either. So either go on on a regular basis to check messages and respond to connection requests and check your notifications, or make sure that in this privacy and settings that you have your profile set up so that you're getting emails if someone's messing, messaging you, or you're getting an email if someone's putting in a connection request. So that way you can respond in a timely fashion. Now, people always ask me, what should I post on LinkedIn? <laughs> What's a good idea? So the, here's some quick ideas for you of things that you might post. 
You might post a quick tip that you think might be helpful to, to people. You might mention a new product or service that your organization is putting out. You might post a helpful resource that you found helpful, why you thought it was helpful, and maybe that you think people in your network might also find helpful. You might post something about a conference or workshop or webinar <laughs> that you attended and why you felt it was helpful. You might post some industry news or article. You might actually post a job opening that's at your organization that you want to get out to your network. You could post a photo or video of some work activity or event and why it was meaningful to you. Even a fun fact that relates to your field or an interesting statistic. So these are just some ideas. Um, we can open up the chat and you know, people can type in any other ideas that they have about things that they've found that they like to post or that they like to see others post just to give us some ideas. The more ideas about what to post, the better. The one thing I will say is, you know, LinkedIn is professional. So posting about what you had for lunch or politics or things like that that you might post on a Twitter or Facebook feed are not for LinkedIn. And oftentimes you'll actually see in your LinkedIn in page, if, if someone posts something that's a little too far on the political or personal side, you'll quickly see people jump on that and say, hey, this isn't Facebook. You know, that's not really appropriate for LinkedIn. And I've actually been pleasantly surprised that as long as LinkedIn's been uh, in business and going, that it really has stayed on the professional side of things. So remember, when it comes to LinkedIn, keep it professional. So again, we'll open up, I'll have Joe open up that chat box. And as I work through the next few slides, if you want to type in anything else that, that you might have found helpful in posting, go ahead and, and do that. Any other ideas folks might have? So there are, I did, I did want to mention that before we get it, we're going to have a lot of time for questions here. So hopefully you'll, you'll stay with us as I answer questions from the group. But some upcoming webinars that we have next week, we are going to talk about acing your virtual interviews. So we'll, we'll focus on that. Interviewing is always challenging. And of course, when we're all having to do it virtually now, that's, that puts a whole nother layer of challenge on it. And then June 10th, we're going to talk about accomplishment statements. So what are those success stories? How do you go about writing them? And in what context and how do you use them in interviews on your resume, in networking, those kind of things. Great. So I will answer some questions here for a bit. So you can feel free to type those questions in your, in your chat box. And, um, or actually, I think we're going to open up the, um, the question and answer box. And um, let's see. Oh, we already have some questions and they're wonderful. So I'll just jump in and then you can continue to type those as you want. So somebody asked, how often should I post something on LinkedIn to stay active but not overposting? Yeah, so hopefully I addressed that already. You know, if you were posting something a couple times a week, that would be great. Now, if you're in the human resources field and you're a recruiter, you'll see that those recruiters are often posting multiple times during the day, but that's their business. So you'll see a lot more activity there. But in most cases, you know, if you're posting something a couple times a week, that would be completely fine. Um, and someone says, as a student who has never worked, what should I post about? Well, if you're a student, you're probably learning things in your classes. That would be something wonderful to post about. Um, maybe you're hopefully doing some reading and starting to engage in your field, or maybe you've done an internship. So those are all great things to post about. Or if you follow um, in your professional association that's affiliated with your, with your industry, Lots of times they'll be putting out information through newsletters or that kind of thing. And so those are good things to post about. Somebody asked, does the picture have to be in color or is black and white okay? So, you know, color I think is a little bit better. It just draws someone's eye in a little bit more. But, um, but at the same point, sometimes some black and white photos are really good as well. You just want to make sure that it's clear and not overly shaded 
that kind of thing. Um, oh, so someone is asking, is this content that I've been talking about in regard to LinkedIn Premium? And no, everything that I've been sharing with you is accessible through the free version of LinkedIn. I usually kind of try to start there um, because I know a lot of people don't want to pay for the premium. So everything that I've been mentioning here is available through the, the free LinkedIn. Um, as I said, when you get into LinkedIn Premium, you have a little bit more filters available to you. You can send out a few more messages on a monthly basis, things like that. Oh, and here's a, here's a question. Um, how would you approach a stranger on LinkedIn? What kind of message would you share? So um, it would be wonderful if that stranger, you know, first thing you want to do is see if there are, you have any mutual connections and then maybe ask that mutual connection to um, or that you know if you're secondly connected to someone ask that person that knows that person to connect you short of that uh, then you want to as i said in that um, in that message that you write to the person you want to give them some context to why it is that you're desiring to connect with them um, and it, it could just be that you were impressed with their career trajectory it could be that this is someone that you've read their articles and you find them very insightful. But really just any kind of context to why it is that you're desiring to connect with them. And, and something more than just, I'm hoping that you can hire me. That would not be a way to approach a stranger. Um, you know, it could be even just that, you know, you see that they've worked for a particular company for a number of years that you've always uh, highly regarded. That could be a reason. So hopefully that helps an, uh, answer that question. Somebody says, do you have any advice on finding new connections if you're hoping to relocate when you don't have contacts in that new city? Absolutely. So when you're trying to make a change to a different geographic location, certainly you wanna see who, who you might already be connected to, who knows people there. You can also look for alumni from your uh, university, your college or university, and are there alumni that are in that particular location? Um, and that's another place where your professional association might be beneficial and by joining groups. So, for example, as a career counselor, my professional association, the National Career Development Association, I might look for people on LinkedIn who are in that association who live in Seattle if I'm looking to relocate to that area. And that might be a starting point for me to, to connect. So those are some quick ideas on how to find connections in that in that new location. Uh, somebody else asked, do you have to accept all invitation requests? This is a very good question. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes uh, you will get that connection request and someone and people do write that little note about why they want to connect with you. And so then you can decide if you do or don't want to connect with them if they're a stranger. Uh, you can always go and look at someone's profile before you accept their connection request. So you can see, oh, you know, does somebody I know know this person? Or in what context might I know this person? Oh, they're another career counselor. Oh, or oh, this is someone that went to my same university. Maybe that's why they're connecting to me. You can also, before you connect, you can write back to them. And I've done this many times when someone just sends me a connection request and I don't know who they are. You can write back to them and say, you know, hey, John, I um, appreciate, thanks for reaching out and putting in a connection request. I was wondering what about my profile um, interested you and why you were looking to connect. And sometimes you'll never hear back from the person. <laughs> and, but oftentimes they'll write back and tell you why they were thinking about connecting. And then sometimes that makes you a little bit more comfortable. Now, at the same point, sometimes you'll get connection requests from people who you can kind of tell they're just, you know, a salesperson trying to sell you something that you don't want. And so then you can just ignore those. Um, they don't get some big message back that says, you know, Andrea was not interested at all in connecting with you. They just, they just never get a thing that says that, that you accepted their connection request. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Now, oftentimes, too, I get asked, um, you know, gosh, I haven't been on my LinkedIn profile for a long time. And I went in there and I've got like 25 connection requests sitting there, some of which are months old. Now, what do I do? Well, I think right at this moment during this pandemic, now is the perfect time <laughs> to go back in there and say, 
hey, now that you know I've been working from home and have a little more time on my hands, I'm finally able to find the time to work through my LinkedIn. And I see that you know a few months ago you put in a connection request. Sorry, I was too busy back then to get back to you, but sure, I'd like to connect now. So it's a good time to do that as well. Uh, a couple more questions here I'll take before I, I share some wrap up information with you. Um, somebody asked, many of my professional colleagues aren't on LinkedIn. How would you recommend I add connections or endorsements? Well, um, if your professional colleagues aren't on LinkedIn, I would tell them to, to get on LinkedIn, sign up and, and watch these webinars uh, because it is it has become kind of a necessity in the professional world. Uh, maybe a, a necessary evil if you want to look at it that way, but it, you know, it is kind of becoming a necessity in the, in the job search process and just not even just in job search because we use LinkedIn for many other things besides just job search, but um, I would encourage them to, to get on LinkedIn. But, um, but, you know, again, as I was saying, look for people that are in similar fields, look for groups that might relate to you and start connecting with those folks. You might have to start with people who um, aren't closely known to you if a lot of your colleagues aren't on LinkedIn, but um, you know, so you may be reaching out to, to strangers a little bit more, but, um, but that may be your starting point. Um, so let me take, um, let me take a, one more question here. Someone says, is there a drawback to not having a photo on your profile? And you know, that's one of the things that people, um, you know, sometimes feel a little bit uncomfortable with. But as I mentioned, um, I, I think I mentioned this early on, that profiles that have a photo are much, much more likely to have someone take a look at. So, um, you know, I would strongly encourage you to have a, pro, a photo, but, you know, again, you, you, you have to do what's most comfortable for you. So I'm gonna cover a couple more slides and then I'll, I'll come back to the questions if we, if we still have some time. But I do wanna wrap up with a little bit of information about UC Davis continuing in professional education. Uh, they wanna definitely thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, knowledge is really vital to maintain a thriving career and continuous learning is, is so important and being able to talk about what you've been doing to be a continuous learner is one of the things that employers really value that you, you are in that mode of continually learning. And so through UC Davis Continuing and Professional Education's courses and programs, they can give you the tools to do that. They deliver those um, in-demand skills from experts. You know, they have wonderful instructors who are experts in their field. And it adds a real quality training so that you see academic quality and credibility to your resume. So I really encourage you to check out some of their offerings. And if you do want to share your thoughts about the webinar series or recommend this to a friend or um, any of those kind of things, then you can definitely reach out to UC Davis Continuing and Professional Education on social media. There is listed their Facebook and their Twitter, and they're using the hashtag futureproofyourcareer for this series, so you can utilize that. Certainly, we'd love it if you posted something on LinkedIn. Nobody has an excuse about what to post on LinkedIn today. <laughs> you can, you've got something fresh right here that you can, that you can post. So um, we, we do wanna thank you for attending today. And as I said, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and keep answering questions for a few more minutes, but I wanted to make sure to share that information uh, with you should any of you need to, to get off the call for, for a 12 o'clock, another, tw another Zoom meeting at noon. But let me go ahead and take a, a, few, a few more questions here. Um, we have lots and lots of questions, so I'm not gonna be able to get to everything, but, um, but I will try to, to get to some of them. Let's see here. Let's see, I'll go, so I'll go back to that. I think I answered the one about not having a photo. How can, oh, how can previous activity and contacts be edited versus seen by all when they view your profile? Yeah, so the, these are settings that when you go through the settings and a privacy section, LinkedIn will very nicely walk you through what each of those toggle on or toggle off uh, settings are for. And so it's in one of those sections that you can do that kind of thing of who sees what's on your profile, 
and uh, those kind of things. Um, oh, someone asked in the job locations and job preferences, are you saying where you've worked or where you would be willing to work? And in that job setting section, you're setting where you would be willing to work. So that's again, if you're trying to relocate to, um, to Seattle, you could put that that's where you want to see jobs from. If you put Sacramento, because that's where you're currently living, then it's only gonna send you jobs that are based here in Sacramento. Someone asked if they should respond to all requ connection requests. And again, you can go through your connection requests and you can accept, you can ignore, or if you're not sure whether you should accept or ignore, you can write a message, you can look at their profile and decide whether or not you wanna accept that connection request. Um, someone says, what are the advantages and disadvantages of following people rather than connecting with them? So if you're just following someone, then in your home feed, you're gonna see things that they're, um, their posting. If you're connected with them, then they're actually part of your network and you can more easily message them and, um, and have some of that interaction. So like I might, um, I might follow Bill Gates or Oprah Winfrey because they post interesting things every now and then, but I'm probably not gonna try to make a connection request with Oprah. We're not that close. So I'll, I'll pass on trying to connect with her. <laughs> um, someone asked about tips on connecting with recruiters and, they, and how to know if the recruiter is legitimate. Yeah, so um, you know, if there are companies that you know you'd like to work for, you know, if someone works for, as a recruiter for a particular company, then they're probably legitimate. And if you're interested in working for that company, I would encourage you to connect with them and to start having conversation with them about what you're interested in and, and things along those lines. If it's a private recruiter, then you might want to inquire a little bit more you know, say, hey, I'd love to visit your website or, you know, see if they have a website and see what positions they're recruiting for. Maybe ask in your field, uh, does, hey, has anybody heard of this recruiter before? Um, before you're just um, blindly um, connecting with anyone who has the recruiter title in their profile. All right, so I think we're about at the 12 o'clock hour. So I wanna let you go to whatever comes next in your day. Hopefully it's something in a nice air conditioned spot, not out in this heat that we're, we're experiencing over the last few days. But again, I really wanna thank you for, for joining us, for participating, and hopefully you'll join us next week when we talk about virtual interviewing. So thank you everyone, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.